hi everyone uh, i'm going to talk about the misconceptions of in a source ways of working and how can uh, the open source program office and in a source program office help uh, this topic would be of interest for uh, uh, the teams that are new to in a source and uh, uh, the organizations that are new to in a source um, if they are work, uh, if they are evaluating on ways to get started with in a sourcing um, it would also be relevant for uh, the teams that were successful in a, in a source uh, journey as a retrospective as well. So um, I am Shanbuga Priya. Um, uh, I go by Priya as well. Um, I am working as uh, uh, engineering advisor at the Open Source Program Office uh, at IKIIT AB. Um, I guide the teams, uh, uh, the engineering teams, on their inner source and uh, open source journey. Um, earlier, uh, I have also been an inner source and open source practitioner. I have worked in uh, inner source projects and uh, open source projects that were incubated in an inner, inner source ecosystem. With this experience, I would like to share my learnings uh, with you around inner source. Um, earlier in my career, I have, all, I have also worked on um, uh, container orchest orchestration technology, uh, predominantly in um, the CSI drivers, virtualization, uh, and disaster recovery technologies uh, for uh, enterprise storage domain uh, in companies like HP and Dell Technologies. So um, in this uh, session, I would like to cover the key learning, uh, a short introduction to the topic, and uh, about the inner source transformation, uh, the common misconceptions around inner source ways of working, and how can uh, the OSPO and ISPO help? Uh, at the end of this session, uh, you would be able to understand what are the common misconceptions around in a source and uh, uh, if those misconceptions are uh, valid or not, and uh, how can the open source and in a source program officers can help the engineering teams. So a uh, quick refresher for uh, if anyone is uh, listening to this talk later uh, in the recording. Um, so in a source, uh, what is in a source? So in a source is uh, uh, applying the open source ways of working and uh, uh, the practices within a company or an organization for developing proprietary software. And uh, open source program office uh, is responsible for guiding the teams um, uh, for compliant usage of uh, open source software. And uh, the inner source program office is uh, uh, responsible for uh, helping and guiding the teams around inner source ways of working, um, inner source journey for engineering teams. Um, and uh, in some cases, there may not be a separate entity as inner source program office in some organizations where the OSPO would take up the responsibilities of inner source program office as well. Um, so, uh, most of us might already know that there are a lot of benefits out of uh, adopting in a source ways of working. And uh, some of those benefits are like uh, improvement in uh, the collaborative development and uh, uh, reduced bottlenecks, innovation, shorter development time, uh, increased employee engagement, and it can be a path, path to in a source as well. And uh, most of these benefits are realized by uh, many organizations and they have um, shared their success stories uh, publicly. And we can see those citations in, in a source commons website as well. And I think uh, uh, some of the speakers have also uh, shared their success stories as well in this conference. Still, uh, for uh, the teams that are new to in a source or for organizations that are new to in a source, uh, they are still uh, hesitant in adopting this uh, in a source ways of working. So what uh, prevents them from uh, adopting this in a source ways of working? I'll come to that shortly. Um, for any organization, um, if we talk about a transformation uh, and specifically the inner source uh, transformation, it's not an easy ride. Um, it, uh, uh, for, I mean, uh, speaking about in a source transformation, uh, it's not going to be a linear uh, graph like this where adoption rate or uh, the inner source adoption rate is going to um, uh, linearly increase over time. It's not going to be a graph like this either. Um, 
I'm like after a tipping point, it's not going to uh, the adoption rate is not going to increase drastically. Uh, rather, it's going to be um, a journey like this, where the adoption rate might increase, and then we might see a lull uh, period, and then there might be uh, some some more progress uh, in NSO's adoption and so on. So, what causes this? Uh, what causes uh, the new teams, uh, or what prevents the new teams from adopting in a source ways of working. There are some misconceptions uh, with uh, teams, um, and I would like to highlight the top three misconceptions. So the first one is fear of losing the project ownership. The teams might think like, uh, after opening up the repository for um, contributions from the external community, uh, within the company, um, they might lose uh, the project ownership. Uh, so uh, that's one of the uh, top misconceptions around uh, that the teams uh, new to inner source might have. This is uh, predominant in with uh, teams that are uh, not familiar with the collaborative development model. So uh, the teams should understand that uh, after inner sourcing, the core team still has control over the project and owns the project, but uh, continues to drive it in a more transparent and an inclusive manner. So the next uh, misconception is um, the teams are not sure about the quality of contributions from the external uh, community. For the teams that are uh, working uh, on the project, I mean, uh, on a regular basis, uh, they would be familiar with uh, all the components involved, the component interactions uh, in a particular software, the testing methodologies, uh, and the security aspects, uh, etc. But for anyone who is contributing, um, uh, anyone from, um, uh, from outside the team and is going to contribute to it, they may not know um, all these different aspects and Sometimes the code contribution might cause regressions. Um, this kind of a scenario uh, may be prevalent in teams where the documentation uh, around the design, uh, design de decisions, uh, testing methodologies, and other aspects may not be uh, transparent uh, for everyone outside the core team. And uh, this can be avoided by having a very transparent documentation as well as uh, a well-architected uh, CI-CD pipeline. And then the third uh, misconception that I would like to highlight is uh, the teams uh, choosing the wrong project for um, inner source as a pilot project. Um, so the teams might think we don't have enough resources to maintain the project, so let's inner source it. Um, I would like to emphasize that uh, uh, building a community around a project is going to take time and uh, the maintainers or the core team play a significant role in building the community and holding the community, community together. So um, they have to uh, spend um, enough time uh, answering the queries from the community or uh, the external contributors and uh, that helps in developing the community around a particular repository or a, a, repo, a, a particular project and hold the community together. So um, these are some of the misconceptions around in a source ways of working. And uh, how can uh, the OSPO or the inner source program office help here? So first is by providing the right guidance and support to the teams. It could uh, start from uh, providing the general guidelines around inner source ways of working, um, the general uh, practices around that, and uh, the governance models, etc. Et and then um, this uh, open source program office and inner source program office can also define um, the roles and responsibilities, the roles of uh, uh, different entities uh, that are involved in the inner source ecosystem and define uh, the responsibilities of each of these entities so that they don't step on each other. And then uh, sometimes there, there uh, might arise a 
conflict where multiple teams are involved in developing a particular software. So um, this, uh, these program officers can also provide guidance around how uh, the conflicts can be resolved uh, in a, a mutual way. And uh, uh, apart from these general guidelines, um, I would say uh, the open source program office and the inner source program office should uh, provide gu continued guidance and support for the engineering teams addressing their specific scenarios um, because uh, the inner source journey for uh, each organization and each team in an organization might be different and they may face uh, different uh, uh, hurdles in their inner source journey. And then finally, uh, getting the whole team on board is very important uh, because uh, uh, the top-down approach without uh, the, sub the necessary um, uh, support from uh, the uh, individual contributors is not going to help uh, or uh, the bottom-up approach without the leadership's uh, guidance and support is also not going to help. So getting the whole team on board is very important. And then uh, the inner source and the open source program office can also provide uh, uh, guidelines on how to choose uh, the uh, right project for inner source. It can be in the form of checklist uh, like this, like why uh, the team wants to inner source a repository, uh, because I would say uh, having the right uh, reason for inner sourcing a repository goes a long way than uh, inner sourcing a repository uh, just for the sake of doing it. And uh, uh, also uh, identifying the consumers of the project, uh, because eventually the consumers are going to uh, turn into contributors and thus uh, forming the community around uh, the inner source project. And um, uh, to, uh, uh, do the team have uh, enough resources to maintain the project and uh, do the maintainers have enough time to answer the queries from the community? These two questions are also important. As I mentioned earlier, uh, the maintainers play an important uh, role in uh, building the community and holding the community together. And then finally, um, apart from the guidance to the engineering teams, uh, the inner source and the open source program office should also provide uh, necessary guidance and support to the leadership um, to realize the uh, benefits of inner source uh, by providing the right metrics um, to capture the return on, return on investment around inner sourcing and also uh, how the leadership can nurture the inner source ecosystem. Um, uh, one example is uh, by providing the rewards and recognitions for uh, 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 for the uh, contributors uh, to inter inner source projects. So finally, uh, to summarize, I would say uh, providing um, guidance and support for engineers and leadership is important for um, uh, inner source uh, to be successful in an organization. And it does not stop in providing the general guidelines and uh, support. It, it should be a continued uh, guidance and support for uh, the engineers uh, as well as the leadership uh, because uh, their uh, journey would be different uh, uh, with uh, teams in an organization. So that's all I had to share with you today. Uh, thank you for this opportunity.